Chances are that you've encountered or even used calcium carbonate in one way or another. It's one of the most important minerals on Earth and can be found in many natural sources, including limestone, marble, and eggshells. It is also used in various industries, from construction to pharmaceuticals, and even the many food products we consume. So it has a variety of important uses in our daily lives. But if, like me, you are an inquisitive type who takes interest in the ingredients used in the products you consume, or perhaps you're a scientist interested in using calcium carbonate in the products you're developing, in this video, we'll tell you everything that's worth knowing about this important substance, including its chemical and physical properties, regulatory status, and safety considerations. We're delighted to have you join us here. PharmaCentral.com is a premium information and raw material selection and comparison platform. We assist pharmaceutical industry professionals solve technical problems and create innovative products. Be sure to check us out at our website, which is www.pharmacentral.com, as well as the usual social media channels. Links are in the description box below. Also, all the references and resources used in the preparation of this video are in the description box. Let's start at the beginning by reviewing what calcium carbonate is. So, calcium carbonate is a chemical substance and a mineral found like calcite and marble, and is the principal constituent in chalk and limestone. It is sometimes known as PCC or GCC. From a chemical point of view, calcium carbonate bears the chemical formula CaCO3, which makes it a carbonic acid salt of calcium. It is without exaggeration one of the most important substances known to man, as well as being a major structural component of biological structures such as eggshells and bone. It is a highly versatile material that is used in a wide variety of products including paper, cement, paints, and plastics. Pharmaceutical-grade calcium carbonate is supplied as an odorless and tasteless white powder or crystals. It is obtained via any one of the following methods. The first method is by mechanical milling and processing of carefully selected natural limestone ores or marble. This grade is known as ground calcium carbonate, or GCC. The second method is purely synthetic. It involves the chemical decomposition of limestone followed by recarbonization. This process is known as the Solvay process, and this grade of calcium carbonate is known as precipitated calcium carbonate, or PCC. PCC is generally purer than GCC, and its properties can be fine-tuned to suit particular applications. Both GCC and PCC grades are available for use as excipients. There's no difference in the chemical formula between PCC and GCC. Therefore, from a quality control point of view, the purity levels of GCC can be readily standardized and matched to official PharmacoPure standards just like for PCC. That said, there are significant differences in physical properties between the two grades and in particular, their particle size, particle morphology, and color. For example, GCC exhibits irregular rhombohedral particles with a broad particle size distribution, while PCC particles have a prismatic rhombohedral shape with a much narrow particle size distribution. The term physicochemical properties refers to specific properties of substances, such as solubility, density, viscosity, and compressibility, that combine both physical and chemical characteristics. Physicochemical properties influence the way materials behave under different conditions. In addition, they are useful for characterizing substances in the fields of chemistry, material science, and pharmaceuticals. With respect to calcium carbonate's physicochemical properties, it is characterized as a white crystalline and powder that is practically insoluble in water and ethanol. It's also a relatively hard, incompressible material with a high compressive strength, hence the reason it is used in the construction field. Its other important physical properties are summarized here. Let's also briefly touch on calcium carbonate's chemistry. In this respect, calcium carbonate is an inorganic salt made up of calcium and carbonate ions. Depending on the arrangement of the ions, different polymorphs exist, although calcite is the most thermodynamically stable form. Important chemical identifiers are shown in this table. Note that GCC and PCC have different CAS registry numbers, even though their chemical formulas are the same. By regulatory status, we mean the legal classification and the restrictions placed on a chemical substance's use, production, storage, transportation, and disposal. Government agencies, such as the Environmental Protection Agency in the United States or the European Chemicals Agency in Europe, 
typically determine the regulatory status of different chemical substances based on their potential health and environmental hazards, as well as intended uses. Calcium carbonate is currently authorized for use in foods, cosmetics, and pharmaceuticals. In foods, it is used as a food additive, colorant, and dietary supplement. A specification for these uses is included in the Food Chemical Codex. In the cosmetic products, it is used as a colorant, thickening agent, and a pH adjuster, and in pharmaceuticals, it is authorized for use as an excipient and active pharmaceutical ingredient. Calcium carbonate monographs are included in the United States Pharmacopeer, the European Pharmacopeer, and many others since it has global regulatory approval. Now that we have covered the basics, let's review the uses of calcium carbonate. As already mentioned, calcium carbonate is a versatile substance that's used widely across multiple sectors and applications, from foods, cosmetics, construction, and plastics. In the pharmaceutical area, it is used in oral solid and liquid dosage forms, both as an excipient and active pharmaceutical ingredient. Pharmaceutical uses will be the focus for this video. So let's kick off by considering its application as an excipient, starting with use in oral solid dosage forms. In oral solid dosage forms, calcium carbonate functions as a filler or diluent and as a dry binder. In this respect, it is widely used to formulate tablets and capsules, as well as granules and powders, especially when the use of an inorganic, less abrasive filler diluent is preferred over other fillers. The other popular use of calcium carbonate is as an absorbent for oily liquids. This is because fine or micronized calcium carbonate grades are capable of absorbing oils or oily active pharmaceutical ingredients or other formulation additives, transforming them into dry, highly compressible powders. Another popular use of calcium carbonate is in the area of nutraceuticals or dietary supplements. In this respect, calcium carbonate functions as a filler, dry binder, and a calcium source. Calcium carbonate is particularly well-suited for formulating chewable tablets. Consumers seem to like the chalky texture. It can also be used for traditional swallow tablets. For tablet production, direct compaction is the preferred approach as it is faster and more efficient. Although PCC or co-processed grades can be used, nutraceutical producers tend to prefer GCC grades. These grades are highly compressible and free-flowing. Although calcium carbonate is the most common form found in calcium supplements, it is not by any means the only salt. The other salts are the citrate, phosphate, lactate, and gluconate. But with so many different salts available, which one should be used in supplements? Calcium carbonate is the least expensive and also has a high content of calcium, at 40% by weight. However, calcium bioavailability depends on the presence of stomach acid. For this reason, it's best to take it with food as the stomach acid released during digestion helps convert the calcium carbonate into calcium chloride which is a more easily absorbed. Individuals taking medication that decreases stomach acid may be at a disadvantage when taking calcium carbonate. Some people also complain of mild constipation or feeling bloated, so it may not be the best alternative. Calcium citrate is more easily absorbed than calcium carbonate as it does not require acid for absorption. It can be taken with or without food. Calcium citrate is a good choice for people who have a history of acid reflux or indigestion as it is less likely to cause stomach upsets. However, the amount of available calcium is lower, at just 21%. This means that consumers may need to take more tablets to meet their daily requirements. Calcium phosphate is the other form of calcium commonly encountered in supplements. It is easily absorbed by the body and does not require food for absorption. The exact amount of calcium available can vary slightly depending on the specific form of calcium phosphate. For example, decalcium phosphate dihydrate contains about 38% calcium, whereas tribasic calcium phosphate contains approximately 40% calcium. Calcium phosphate is a good choice for people who need to increase their calcium intake and also want to improve their bone health, although it's more expensive than the citrate. Let's also briefly touch on the other use of calcium carbonate, that is, as a white pigment. In this respect, calcium carbonate has been used as a white pigment for centuries. It is still used as an extender in tablet coatings. While lacking the whiteness of titanium dioxide, it is a safer, more widely accepted material and known for its high coverage properties. The other major use of calcium carbonate is as an active pharmaceutical ingredient in medicines intended for the treatment of osteoporosis or in antacid products. 
only specialty grades of calcium carbonate that have been produced and certified to the purity requirements of an active pharmaceutical ingredient in the pharmacopeer are suitable for these applications. Let's briefly look at each of them. Osteoporosis is a condition in which bones become brittle and more prone to fractures, typically as a result of a lack of calcium in the bones. Patients with osteoporosis who take calcium carbonate supplements can increase the amount of calcium in their bones, making them stronger and less prone to fractures. Calcium carbonate is a popular calcium supplement because it is inexpensive and can be taken in high doses, which is an advantage over other calcium supplements. Calcium carbonate is also routinely used in many over-the-counter digestive aids and antacids as the API. Due to its basic properties, it is able to react with gastric hydrochloric acid, helping to bring down the pH of the stomach contents to a more neutral level. The final point concerns safety. The first thing to remember is that humans and animals are ordinarily exposed to calcium carbonate. It is a naturally dissolved substance in the water we drink and the food we eat. Secondly, calcium carbonate has been used as a food additive for several decades and is currently approved by European Food Safety Agency. It is generally regarded as a non-toxic, non-hazardous raw material. The European Commission's Scientific Committee on Food has determined that calcium is well tolerated at a daily calcium intake of 2,500 mg per day, whether it is through dietary intake or supplementation, and it does not lead to any adverse effects. However, a number of potential side effects of excessive calcium intake have been described. These include compromised glomerular function in perimenopausal women, milk alkali syndrome, and kidney stones. Calcium carbonate may also interact with other drug substances when taken concurrently. Therefore, on the basis of these and many other studies, authorities have concluded that the ingestion of calcium carbonate by humans is tolerated at an upper intake level of 2,500 mg per day. This is equivalent to a dose of 104 mg per kilogram body weight for an individual with a body weight of 60 kg. Provided these ranges are observed, there are no adverse effects expected. Finally, since calcium carbonate is used as a food additive with an allowed daily intake of not allocated, it does not create concerns regarding its toxicity when taken orally. So, there you have it. Hopefully, you found this information useful. Please check out our other videos on other materials and formulation tips. For those interested in improving their knowledge and skills, we will start offering free and paid courses on our portal. Visit www.pharmacentral.com for more information. All links are in the description below. If we've added value to you, please show your appreciation by liking, commenting, and sharing this video. This helps us a lot, and we're grateful. And so that you don't miss out when we release new content, consider subscribing to our channel.